Hi everyone, welcome back to Science. I'm Miss Catherine and today is a very exciting day um, because today is our last lesson in our Matter and Energy and Ecosystems Unit. And today in lesson 3.4, we are going to explain to the Econauts what happened in their biodome experiment to cause it to not be successful and what changes they should make um, for their next biodome. Um, so for today, um, you will need the typical materials. And if you uh, have access to all of your previous models, explanations, and key concepts that we've recorded on all of our sheets of paper from all of our lessons in the unit, it would be really helpful for you to have that out in front of you um, as the explanation that we make for our Econauts today is going to combine all of these things that we've been figuring out uh, throughout the entire unit. And as you're gathering all of those materials, if you're following along online, here is your click path. And for one last time today, here is how I would like you to set up your heading on your sheet of paper. So pause the video, gather all of the things that you need for today um, so that you are set up and ready to go. If we are going to explain um, to the Econauts today what exactly happened in their biodome, we're going to need to think about um, the cause and effect link between an action or event um, and the outcome or the effect. Okay, so we're going to warm up our thinking around cause and effect relationships here today uh, by considering a scenario that we're hopefully not too familiar with. Um, this idea of a classmate being late to first period. Okay, so we're, we're gonna have this um, scenario right here that we consider here first today. Quincy was late to his first period class, but what caused him to be late, okay? Um, and so when we're asked to consider a cause, remember that a cause is why something happened. Um, and an effect is what happened. So here we know what happened, we know the effect. Quincy was late to his first period class. Um, but we wanna think about why that happened, um, the cause of that effect, okay? Um, so we're gonna pause the video. And if you have access to Amplify Online, we're gonna complete the cause and effect example sorting tool activity around this um, scenario, okay? And to do that, we're gonna show the series of causes and effects that made Quincy late to first period. So what happened to then cause something else to then cause Quincy to be late to first period? And we're gonna do that by ordering cards um, that show the reason why he might have been late to first period. If you don't have access to Amplify Online, you could pause the video right now and try to write out a sequence of events that would cause someone to be late to first period class in the morning. Um, or you can just follow along with me, see what the options are in my sorting tool, then pause your video and write down your cause and effect chain. Um, so we are in lesson 3.4 and we're in activity one right now. And when you click on activity one, you will see here the link to the cause and effect example here about Quincy. Um, so again, the, the effect we know what happened Well, he was late to first period. But what were all of the steps that happened before that uh, to cause this outcome? So something occurred to cause something else to occur, to cause something else to occur that ultimately had this effect of Quincy being late to first period. Uh, so down below here, I have um, some options. Um, Quincy overslept, Quincy stayed up late, Quincy missed the bus. Uh, so pause the video and either on your paper or in your sorting tool, put these events in order uh, that would logically explain why Quincy was late to first period. How'd you do? Um, so when I look at this, well, if I'm gonna start here, well, he was late, um, well, he missed the bus, okay? And he was late because he missed the bus. He missed the bus because he overslept. So he was late because he missed the bus, because he overslept, and he overslept because he stayed up late. 
when we are today explaining to the Econauts um, what happened, this cause and effect analysis is going to be very important uh, for us because we have to make it very clear to them why one thing led to another. Um, so our uh, Quincy example here being late to first period is one everyday example of a cause and effect chain. Um, and right here I have another cause and effect chain for us to consider uh, and practice here, this link between an event and an outcome, as we're going to need to do this in our um, explanation to the Econauts today. Um, so let's consider this effect of a plant dying and let's consider the cause of that effect as we put the plant in the closet, okay? We need to really clearly link why this cause leads to this effect. Um, even if you feel like it's very obvious why this cause leads to this effect, um, we wouldn't be very good scientists and we wouldn't be very good at explaining our scientific reasoning to others if we didn't make that link um, very, very clear. So I want you to think for a moment, why would putting a plant in a closet cause that plant to die? And what are all of the very specific steps along the way that link this cause to this effect? So when I'm considering this cause and this effect, um, and why putting a plant in the closet would um, cause my plant to die? Well, I'm thinking that plants use light energy uh, to make energy storage molecules. Okay, so if I put the plant in the closet, it's not getting light. And so it can't use that light to make energy storage molecules. And if the plant isn't making the energy storage molecules, that's problematic because plants use energy storage molecules to release the energy that they need to live. And so without those energy storage molecules, the plants will die. Um, so I hope that you're noticing here um, to really thoroughly explain the link between this cause and this effect of putting the plant in the closet and the plant dying, we need to be really detailed in the sequence of events that um, follow here in this chain. I put the plant in the closet so the plant doesn't get light. The plant needs the light to make energy storage molecules. Without energy storage molecules, the plant does not have the energy it needs to live. The plant does not have the energy it needs to live, therefore it will die. Now that we've practiced our cause and effect thinking, it's time to apply this thinking to the biodome. Um, so when you're ready and if you have access to Amplify Online, you're going to pause this video and you're going to use the cause and effect in the biodome sorting tool here in activity two to show the series of causes and effects that happened in the biodome ecosystem to specifically cause the plants and the animals in the biodome to not have enough energy storage molecules to survive. Um, and if you are not following along online, um, you can create your own flowchart on your piece of paper, uh, but follow along with me so you see what the options are so that you can um, sort them and create your flowchart. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my amplifying and we're in activity two, the sorting tool. And here is the cause and the effect in the biodome um, sorting tool activity. Again, we need to show the series of causes and effects that happened in the biodome. Okay, and the first and the last one is there for us. Um, the last one is the one that we've known the entire unit. Um, it's the effect that um, the Econauts saw in their biodome to cause them to stop their experiment. And that is that the plants did not have enough energy storage molecules to survive. Um, and last lesson, we figured out the ultimate reason, the ultimate cause um, to why all of this happened. And that was because the Econauts were burying their dead matter. Um, so we wanna look at the other four options here to place them in order and link together how this event this Econauts burying their dead matter caused this ultimate outcome, this ultimate effect 
of the plants and animals not having enough energy storage molecules. So you wanna look at what the options are here and you wanna put them in order. So the options are the rate of photosynthesis decreased, the rate of cellular respiration decreased, the number of decomposers decreased, and the amount of carbon dioxide in the air decreased. So pause the video and let's put those in order. How did you do? Um, okay, so when the Equinauts buried the dead matter, this caused our decomposers um, to decrease uh, because the decomposers could not access the energy storage molecules in that dead matter because it was buried. Um, so when the number of decomposers decreased, the overall rate of cellular respiration in the biodome decreased because we had um, less um, components of the ecosystem contributing to cellular respiration. So when the rate of cellular respiration decreased, the amount of carbon dioxide in the air also decreased uh, because carbon dioxide is an output of this cellular respiration chemical reaction. And when the amount of carbon dioxide in the air decreased, the rate of photosynthesis also decreased because carbon dioxide is an input to this chemical reaction of photosynthesis. And when the rate of photosynthesis decreased, the plants and the animals overall did not have enough energy storage molecules because energy storage molecules are an output of this chemical reaction of photosynthesis. Great job. Now that we are clear on our cause and effect uh, chain of events that led to the um, plants and the animals in the biodome not having enough energy storage molecules, we want to model this out for our Econauts, um, showing them how carbon is moving throughout their biodome so that they don't make the same mistake next time and that they continue that carbon cycle um, in a way that's beneficial to the environment overall. And our model is going to focus on carbon moving because again, carbon um, has been an important atom for us in our series of cause and effect events. Uh, because carbon is in energy storage molecules, it's involved in photosynthesis as well as cellular respiration. And when you are ready today, you are going to create a model of the entire biodome and how carbon is moving throughout all components of the biodome. And you can either use the modeling tool in Amplify Online in lesson three to do that, or you can draw your own model out on that sheet of paper that you have. Um, and here's why I said earlier today, it's gonna to be helpful to have your past models um, in front of you as you work today, because this biodome model is really just combining the previous models that we have made uh, together into one complete picture. So this model will have elements of your previous photosynthesis model, as well as your previous model of carbon moving through cellular respiration. And I am not today going to create my model um, and have you follow along with me uh, because I think that you are able um, to do this now on your own um, without watching me do mine. However, I will show you what my finished model looks like so that you can check your work and make any corrections to your model that you may need. So at this time, pause the video and make your model. All right, let's check our work. Um, so here's what my biodome model looks like. Um, I have my carbon and carbon dioxide in the air, as well as carbon in energy storage molecules down here in the dead matter. And I'm showing how everything is cycling um, throughout, how all of this carbon is moving throughout these different components of my ecosystem through my labeled arrows, okay? So I'm showing that carbon is going into the atmosphere 
from producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, and decomposers um, through that process of cellular respiration. So I have that labeled in each piece. I have the inputs and the outputs of cellular respiration labeled. Um, I am also showing carbon moving between um, producers to consumers from um, primary consumers to secondary consumers as these things eat one another. Um, I am also showing that movement of carbon from dead matter to decomposers because that's what decomposers eat. And then again, I'm showing that movement of carbon um, from each of these four components down to dead matter um, as those living things um, die off over time. And then here in my producers, again, not forgetting that um, oh so important process of photosynthesis, bringing in carbon dioxide from the air as well as energy from sunlight to do that um, because this is how our other organisms within the biodome get the energy storage molecules. Um, it's our plants that need to make them first in the process of photosynthesis. Great job. Now, so exciting. We are ready to write a recommendation to our Econauts um, for how their plans for their next biodome should be different than their plans for this first biodome so they don't run into the same problem twice. When you are ready, you're gonna write out a recommendation to the Econauts um, and you wanna make sure that you're using your cause and effect flowchart as well as our biodome model to help us do this and make sure we're not forgetting any important detail. Um, as you are writing, check off the words in this word bank to make sure that they are included in your work. Did you use all of the words? Great. If not, go back and revise so that you are including a missing term. And the last thing we're gonna check in our writing, um, check in our recommendation, is that we have all of these steps. Um, and so if you would like, um, you can check out my sentence starters here um, and reflect on how you might have said something similar in your written recommendation. And again, if you're missing something that I have um, here in my sentence starter suggestions, pause the video and revise your writing so that you're including those elements. Um, so are you very clearly stating in a claim your recommendation for what the Econauts should or should not do this second time around? Are you then going in to that cause and effect series of events? Um, what burying dead matter causes, how that impacts decomposers when they're not getting energy storage molecules, how that's leading to a decrease in carbon dioxide in the air, and then how that is affecting our producers and the overall amount of energy storage molecules. And then lastly, we wanna make sure we're being clear to them how this outcome can be prevented and um, showing how this is an example of that interconnectedness between all components of an ecosystem. Awesome job. So as I reflect on our unit, uh, here today, I want to remind you that this biodome that we have been investigating is based off of a real life biodome experiment that scientists conducted called Biosphere 2. And Biosphere 2, this biodome still exists, and many scientists really take advantage of being able to study this closed ecosystem and do experiments um, within this biodome. So I have, as we reflect today, a short video clip for us to watch, um, telling us more about how scientists today are still using this biodome and the work that they're doing. So let's watch. So today at Biosphere 2, uh, our visitors come inside and they get to see all the biomes up close and personal. And that lets us uh, save money on the energy cost of keeping a closed system, but it also lets us take parts of Biosphere 2 to close it off when we need to do research, for example, in the rainforest or with our Landscape Evolution Observatory. I'm Ty Taylor. I'm a scientist at Biosphere 2. This is the rainforest biome, which is like a model of a natural tropical forest. 
But in this model, we can actually control the climate, which is something you can't do in the natural world. Okay, Steve, can we get some rain in the northeast quadrant, please? For northeast, overhead quadrant, ready to go. We can make rainfall, we can put the forest through drought, and we can raise temperatures to simulate what a hotter world might look like. In my research here, I help to answer one of the big scientific questions of our time, which is how tropical forests will respond to a warming climate. During photosynthesis, leaves exchange molecules between the leaf and the atmosphere. In the rainforest biome, we can seal off this tropical forest, and that way we can monitor the coming and going of all of the molecules through the forest. This helps us understand how the forest will interact with the climate. We can measure how a whole ecosystem responds to changing climate. When the Biospherians lived inside, they had a farm space where they grew their food crops. Today, we're using that farm space to run our institutional experiment, studying water. For 10 years, we'll learn everything about how water interacts with a complex landscape and how water, plants, and soil move carbon and energy in a hotter, drier world. My name is Aditi Sengupta. I study soil microbes, and today I'm going to take some soil cores from the Landscape Evolution Observatory. So once I have the soil samples, I'm going to take them back to my lab and then I'm going to analyze them for all the kind of different microbes that I can find in there. The challenge out in the real world is you have all of these uncontrolled variables that you don't exactly know what is driving the system. And what we can do here at a really big scale is we can control those variables but still see systems operating at scales that are more realistic than what you find in a small laboratory. Wow, that's really cool. Can't wait to um, see what happens uh, with that work of those scientists in Biosphere 2. Um, so as we finish our unit today on matter and energy and ecosystems, um, now would be a really great time once again to message your science teacher as I know they miss you um, and I miss my students so much and we love to hear from you um, and know how you're doing. Uh, so message your science teacher today, tell them hi, tell them how you're doing and share that recommendation that you just wrote to the Econauts about how their plans for the next biodome should be different. I know your science teacher would um, love to see how your thinking has developed throughout this unit. Um, and I wanna thank you as well for letting me uh, join you here in your science learning um, throughout this weird time in our world. Um, and I just wanna remind you that you are loved, you are missed, and remember to stay safe, stay healthy, and stay kind.